Hi folks, this is Donnie here. Decided to do something a little bit different because I used to get pretty irritated myself when I watched the silent uh, screen recording and there was never any audio explaining what was going on. Um, yeah, so whether there was mouse clicks or whatever the case was. Um, so I thought I'll try it. It, it. Let's see how it goes. Um, you just have to bear with me a little bit because my mind doesn't always think in a linear fashion. So if I get lost halfway, I may just have to cut it and edit a little bit. But let's see how it goes. This is part one of two parts. I'm just looking, uh, doing a comparison at the moment between Scuttlebutt uh, as a social media uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, uh, social uh, platform compared to Ether. Um, they are both peer-to-peer -peer sitting on your desktop and pushing and pulling out to, to other clients across the network. So they're not connecting to any central server or login. Uh, this comes with some responsibilities obviously because you're going to have things like a signature file or a fingerprint file which resides in your machine which is actually your identity if you lose that you've actually lost your access uh, to your network and your and your files and so on so it's quite important it's not like a centralized server where if you forget the password you can just ask for a reset you log in and there's all your data um, so you'd want to back up obviously that file and make sure you keep it safe it's also another slight little problem in that if you've got two or three different clients, like say a, a Linux client and a Windows client or Android client, they're going to essentially be different entities. Um, you can give them the same username, so they can both appear as Donnie or as Mark or as John. The fingerprint is going to be different, so in essence the system sees it as different identities. Uh, people can still reply to you as Donny or whatever. They'll normally associate you with your uh, gravatar or your image or your photo. So they'll sort of know it's you and they're speaking to you. The trend often is you'll call the mobile one maybe Donny-Mobile um, or whatever the case is, uh, just to differentiate. There are some tricks around that on Ether we've actually managed to get it right to duplicate it across two devices using the same fingerprint. I haven't tried that yet with, with um, the Scuttlebutt. But I just want to give you an idea of what the interface actually looks like and what you can expect if you go through it. So this is the view that you actually see once you have logged in. I'm not going to go through the whole setup. Uh, essentially, if you've installed it fresh, you're not going to see anything. You've got to connect to a, to a pub list, uh, to a pub server, uh, or to a couple of individuals. A pub server is usually easier because you can immediately see a few individuals, topics, and sort of just get going, actually. Um, but mine is already set up. This is the public view that you're seeing here, which is sort of just a stream of what's been posted. And I'm going to try and differentiate Ether. This may be its new view, where you can sort of just see everything that's going on. Um, they, they, they've got the same sort of concepts, but they are slightly different. And I'll try to cover, you know, some of those some of those minor differences. What is interesting here is if you look up at the top here, you'll see where it's got the public feed. It's showing three, which means there's three unread or newer messages that I haven't seen or read yet. Uh, and you'll see the same thing over there saying showing three updates. So it's just one way of seeing a notification on um, Patchwork. And I should just also mention here, Patchwork is probably the easiest client on Scuttlebutt just to get going. Uh, it's for Windows, Linux, and Mac. There's a different client for, for Android, but it's probably the easiest one to get going with. So that's how you'll see there's something new waiting for you. Um, and the same thing will go over here. If there's mentions, for example, there you can also see I've got a one and it shows me there's a mention. If I click over there now, I should see the refreshed feed. Um, these are probably the new feeds. Something else you'll probably also notice right off the bat here is that on a particular post, there's also a very clear like button and there's a reply button. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the tags do. I mean, I know about hashtags, but I can't quite figure out that I can add tags. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll have to figure out what's going on there. What's nice is you can see who else has liked something. Um, one of the key differences also with Scuttlebutt is you, you're not only following an interest or a channel or a, a topic. You can also follow profiles, people. You can also message people. So that's a completely different thing from, from Ether, which is purely based around like Reddit. It's just, or should I say, not just Reddit, but uh, similar to Reddit, it's topic and channel based mostly. Ether itself, you cannot message uh, an individual and you cannot follow an individual. So there's already one, one key difference. Um, 
let me have a look down here so yeah this is the public the public feed uh, you'll see over here there's a couple of active channels ones that have been recently mentioned just useful to see what's actually busy going here is the two pub servers that I actually am connected to at the moment um, and it's also quite nice it gives you a suggestion possibly of who to follow um, which is also different from from ether private you can these are encrypted the other messages are public but these are private messages which are, which are encrypted uh, end to end so it's only me and that individual or three individuals that are busy having a conversation here we're able to see each other's messages the channels I spoke about just now um, there's already a list of channels here uh, but you can also let me just have a look here uh, oh I should also say I've only been going in this for about two days so I'm a little bit a little bit new to everything still um, I just wanted to show the channels uh, where's all the channels hmm. let's have a look here uh, channels browse recently active okay there was what I wanted to show you quite a, a broad variety of channels um, these are ones that are actually in use at the moment or topics and you'll see for example these little green marks those show there that I am subscribed I've subscribed to those topics and channels so I'll see those in my feed the moment somebody posts and use that hatch that hashtag um, I'll see it if I go click on that or any one of these for example it'll actually take me straight to the channel and I'll be able to see uh, the most recent messages that have been posted so for example there you'll see there's a post that I've made uh, it's got two likes already and I'll show also something else that's unique to patchwork which is not on ether which is the ease, easier embedding of images and links uh, there you can see for example when I made this post I had one two three four five six seven different channels this is actually quite nice in that you can mention the seven channels if you go to any of these channels your particular post appears in that channel as if you've posted it there uh, some networks only allow you to post to one group or one community at a time so this is actually quite flexible and I like this one post and it appears in one place six places seven places um, yeah anybody actually reading my post you can see there's a post here they can also click on reply and they can go straight into replying I'll show just now how to to actually compose a reply or to do a um, a uh, an edit uh, a post then the other thing here they've got a slightly richer view also of the profile so if you click profile there's a bio over there you can put in hashtags you can have a photo um, that's my public key if anybody wants to follow me that's the key that I give out to them and then you'll show it'll also show your last couple of posts that you've made so again nice it's almost a little bit like Facebook there click on the profile you can see the person's posts they've made um, on the right hand side here you can see people that are friends of mine so these are people we've actually interacted with message we've replied and so on to each other followers are purely people just following me I've got a couple already that's good uh, and then these are the people that I'm actually following myself already um, so definitely more of a personal profile um, view uh, mentions okay, I'm not sure what's happened here oh, it's obviously where I've been mentioned and the other thing is you can see a threaded reply so uh, I had a post somebody's replied and mentioned me I got an alert for that they can also show quotes um, to quote from the message they're replying to over here you'll be able to search for either a person or a mention a profile or anything else or a topic it should be performing the search on my local machine remember it, it, syn it syncs everything actually to my machine and then it pushes and pulls from there and I see within the last two three days I've got about 2.2 .2 gigabytes of um, of data I'm assuming that's probably for the last couple of months of data that it's caught up on I don't think that's what it's going to be downloading every day I think from now on it'll be the a couple of messages back and forth um, the other thing I wanted to show I've shown the channels already um, so just to mention again on channels 
that these are very much like a hashtag that you use on Twitter. Um, and they are useful because they'll give you an idea also of interesting topics to follow as well as personal profiles or people that, may, that you may want to friend and to follow their personal profile as well. You can also block people. Uh, let me try that maybe without blocking somebody. If I go to my profile, uh, you'll see on friends, oops, you've got options like you can follow the person over there. That means you're going to receive um, all their posts. You can be neutral or you can actually block their posts as well. Um, and it has got silent blocks as well as loud blocks. I don't actually want to click on there right now, but um, the loud block will basically notify everybody you have blocked somebody. A silent block is just for yourself. It doesn't alert anybody that you've actually blocked them. Very nice feature. Um, yeah, so that we've got that. There's sending of private messages. Then the other thing I just want to briefly show as well is the posting. So let me check I have covered everything. Yeah, channels extended. Um, so to, to post a message, it's a markdown editor. So you've got a, the only thing is you don't, you'll notice there is no little button here like bold, italic, underline, or anything else to, to quickly and easily uh, put things in. I've, I've asked if I can't possibly uh, include that in future. It's not too difficult. Once you've learned Markdown, um, it's standard across all the various platforms that, that make use of Markdown. So I think once you've used it once or twice, it's not too difficult to, to get used to. I have prepared a short post just to show you what it does. Um, now what's interesting here, okay, so the, let me just explain some of the basic Markdown. The hashtag or double hash or triple hash will be a heading. Um, this will be plain text. I've put in un that, that, that start underline end underline over there is just to emphasize text uh, to give it sort of an italic look. Double asterisks will bold or double emphasize text. Uh, what else have I got here? I've put in a link and you'll see a link is formed by uh, a, a text portion over here that you'll see in the text and there's the actual link itself. The next part here was just to include an image and it always starts with an exclamation mark and then similarly to a link it's got the text over here but this is hidden text this will be for assisted reading assisted devices to where they can't see something it'll read out the words to say what it actually is uh, and the link to the image with a .png or a .jpg or whatever wherever the image is so this is quite nice because it means you're not uploading a physical file which is now being replicated right around the network to everybody's machines this is quick and light all that will happen is the text post will go out. When the person's actually viewing the, to the post, their client will pull in the image and show it as part of the, um, of the post. So that's quite a light and easy way of doing it. And this is something that I'm going to spend a bit of time on in Ether, just explaining maybe a bit of a shortcoming there. Their preview is very limited. They will only allow, I think, a previewed image from Imgur and one or two other whitelisted sites. Uh, any other images, well, you're going to have to upload it yourself and then you might be following copyright or uh, falling foul of copyright rules uh, if that image is not copyright protected. Uh, so this in a way is not bad because it also references the original image. So if you are using somebody's, somebody's image that needs attribution, this in a way does the attribution already. If you click on it, you're going to get to the original source of the, um, of the image. So I quite like this. Um, then you'll see, of course, I've got two hashtags or channels over there. If the channel doesn't exist, it'll create it automatically. It's a virtual channel anyway. Um, and I did explain about that a little bit earlier on. Actually, I hadn't actually looked at this before. I haven't tried the, the content warning, but this is for nudity, sex, violence, etc. So I'd imagine you'd put a, a comment in over here. A person would see something, they would see the comment and then have to click on it to read the post. It'll be something along those lines. Yes, you can attach an image as well. Um, but like I said, I prefer this uh, to me. It's quicker, lighter. It's probably the preferable way to go if you want, especially on a peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, you can clear the draft and this is quite a nice little feature. So before you actually post it now, especially with um, Markdown editing, you, you, you're not getting WYSIWYG. You can't see exactly what you're doing. So the nice thing is you click over here to preview before you publish. If I click on preview now, you can see there's my heading, there's the emphasized text, there's my bold text, there's my link I put in, and there's the 
preview of the image that I'd put in as well. I'm not sure if you can get, no you can't. And there of course is the two links over there all ready to go. So um, all I'd have to do now is click confirm and this would post and then push out in a couple of minutes or so when it syncs. So remember again it's not live. Peer-to-peer -peer means it's got to sync through another peer and possibly another peer and replicate itself until it gets to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, whatever machine. Um, it's not instantaneous. But, but that in a nutshell is how you post and I, I quite like this. I mean I could certainly live, I like the formatting of the post. It's, it's how I like to do my posts. So for me that's, this is doing everything I really need to do. Um, so yeah, that's in a, in a nutshell I think is Patchwork, the application. Um, I'll do a follow up again sometime if I, I pick up anything else specifically interesting. But the next post I'm going to do or the next video is going to be around uh, ether and then I'll just be contrasting it with with scuttlebutt and patchwork as to what the, the key differences are. So okay I hope you enjoyed that and uh, my voice didn't put anybody to sleep and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.